Okay, guys. So there have been a couple of requests on uh, essentially how to create tileable textures in Substance Painter inside of Substance Designer. Uh, so I figured I would illuminate a little bit of the you know the doubts around that. So you know, let's say that I know that my tile is going to be uh, like five feet or 1.52 meters. Uh, so I just made a plane. I literally just went Shift A and then Mesh create a plane, and it and it is here, here in the here in the middle. Now I would like to be able to edit whatever is in this part here and see it propagate in these areas around it. Those are just duplicated, uh, the same it's exact plane. Uh, duplicated with the same UVs. So the only thing that happened here is that if I if I select everything here and I go into UV editing mode, the only thing that you're going to see is that the middle one is within the 0 to 1 space and it's occupying it to the to the max. And the other ones, the surrounding ones are the exact same UVs, but I have moved them one unit to, you know, to, to the right. Uh, and this is so Painter doesn't freak out and I don't get any baking issues. So, uh, so okay, so once that is done, I, I, I can't really export the mesh like this, right? So for that, I am going to need to join everything together, which I am doing now. And I want the pivot to be in the center. And I'm just going to go here, press M, and merge by distance. And it removed all of the vertices. So all I have to do now is just export this piece um, so that uh, I have no issues uh, in, in Painter. And I can actually see my texture uh, actually tiling, which should be really cool. Um, so I've already went ahead and exported that. Um, so this is my low poly, my high poly. Oh, great. Blender uh, just decided to uh, crash. So great. Thanks, Blender. Um, so if I turn on my high poly here, this is my high poly whenever it shows up. Yeah. Uh, please. I apologize for like this. This is super rushed, but it's just some some wooden tiles. Okay, it's all basic uh, sub D stuff. At this stage, what you can do to make your life in Painter a little bit easier, you can actually go in and uh, vertex paint these, so you can generate an ID mask. So for example, I can go here L, and I can go to vertex paint mode, I believe. Yes, I can go to vertex paint mode, right? And then I can get the stuff that I have selected here. Vertex paint mode again, please. And then I have this selected thing, okay? And then I can just go in and, and draw paint. Uh, which one? Which one of these was the one that worked? Oh. Select, paint, uh, set vertex colors. Okay. I should be able to see it to see it here. But anyway, you can either use vertex colors or you can uh, assign a material uh, like so. So, for example, if I wanted to, uh, to just go ahead and assign a material, I can just go here and let's say that this is just going to be like a really crazy blue. That's fine. And then uh, all of my uh, supposed bolts are going to be like this, uh, this yellow material, right? Okay, great. And I click assign and as you can see, uh, we can actually uh, 
we can actually use that to help us bake. So I already went ahead and brought those to Painter. And this is what the bake looks like. Uh, don't mind the artifacts like this. You can actually fix them with this clone stamp tool if you want to. Uh, I just wasn't very careful when I laid out my blanks, but it's it's good enough for a test. So now we now what you can do you can actually uh, just go ahead if you go to I'm just going to to like get like a smart material real quick here because I don't want to spend too much time on this. Uh, I can just drag and drop like a smart material here, and then uh, and then we have. Uh, we have some some wood that we can start painting, but the the main the important thing here is that if I, for example, if I get my brush here, uh, let's get my brush. Yeah, if I get my brush here, whatever I draw in one is going to be repeated on the others. So that's going to be really useful if I want to go in and just go like, oh, I would like to like <coughs> paint some like edgeware and stuff like that like i can do that and i'm just pressing shift to uh to get the straight line by the way but yeah like so this is this is one way of doing this right when you have a mesh and you actually uh bake the thing and then export all of the maps and do all of that good stuff right however what if you wanted to just start uh, just start drawing in Substance Painter. You can actually uh, do that too. And I'm just going to repurpose my uh, my file low. I'm going to discard this guy here. And the main thing, the main thing here, you need to be aware is uh, the limits of where um, where you need to be. Uh, you need to be drawing in. So for example, if I wanted to actually get some high details in here, I'm just going to delete this. I'm going to call this fill layer my, ooh, if I can spell high details, right? And I'm just going to get high in here. And I wanted to push down. I'm going to add a black mask. And then what I can do is I can actually uh, get a fill layer or I can start painting. I'm just going to show you what it looks like when you start painting first. And for that, I'm actually going to just try and get like a nicer brush for this. Because essentially what I want to try and draw here are like some panel lines. Da, 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 da. I am pretty sure there is there is a brush that is like super soft. Never mind. I'll just edit this thing. Um, so I just need to find like one of the square alphas. Ooh, there's there's a lines one here. Okay. No, no, this is. So this is the thing. Yeah, no, if I get paraboloid shape, oh, shape is gonna help me. Okay, shape bell, yes, Sh shape sharp line. Oh, that might work. So I'm gonna try this guy here and kind of see and kind of see how that works so if i wanted to like for example like get some get some panels going i'll just click shift click right and of course you need to be able to to align your things but the the main thing here is oh, okay i can like actually like just just start like editing this thing the way I want to. Actually, I think I'm. Oh yeah, that that need. That's wrong. That needs to be down. Yeah, yeah. 
and so you know if I wanted to if I wanted to do the same uh, the same uh, wooden planks I would uh, just like try and start drawing like 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 so right and try and like fixing like this right and then I can you know just try and make things a little bit you know more natural with like some wood grain like this and I can like I can add a filter to like help me out I can help add like a blur you know but as you can see I can start like drawing this thing if you don't want to really draw what you can also do is uh, add a fill layer and then you can find a generator so we can get like a brick generator like so and let's say that I that I want this uh, actually poking out and I'm just gonna take a look at the at the settings at the parameters for that and so let's say that I actually want more less bricks Y and more bricks more br bricks X yeah okay let's say it's like three worlds and I can start like adding the the bevel smoothness in the bevels corner and I can add like a little gap and I really yeah I should really get that gap uh, and then I can start start like sloping them and I can start offsetting them too and add some offset variation as well so as you can see like there's there's oh oh yeah that yeah this is what I, this is what I want so as you can see like there's there's a lot that you can do with uh, with generators inside uh, inside painter and the cool thing is the cool thing is is that those same generators are also uh, in designer so you know lots of uh, lots lots of stuff play around with um, yep well um, I hope this has been sort of useful to you and uh, do let me know uh, if you have any doubts anyway cheers <laughs>